Hey everybody. Recently we spent a week at the Four Travel Factory and we were there for the ladies driving school, but the factory also gave us uh, a tour and a walk around of a diesel pusher coach and everything you should look at before you go on a road. So in this video, we're going to have the walk around. So come on in and watch this video. sort of thing so if you have any questions feel free to interrupt it at any time and uh, we'll address your question all right so what I like to do first is, is turn headlights on turn my four ways on uh, that way you can get a good look and you'll get a good idea if your turn signals are working your headlights are working all of your your clearance lights uh, you know front and back down the side uh, that way you can make a note if you have something that's out if you have something critical that's out like a turn signal before you even get on the road. Um, it's a bit safer practice to do that. Sure you to do that or get on the road with, with the, any coach that I have. So you, know, you want to take a look, front and back, uh, make sure that, like I said, you don't have anything hanging down. Uh, you know, a lot of times wires, uh, exhaust pipes, they might be knocked around while you're driving. And you may not even know. So if you do the general appearance look, you, know, you want to look at the top, make sure there's nothing that's landing on the top of your coach that you're not aware of that'll fly off while you're driving. Um, you know, all those things uh, make, make a difference. Okay. Um, fluid leaks. Uh, you want to look on the ground, make sure that you don't have any fluid puddling up front and back. Uh, of course, your generator's here in the front. You want to make sure that, you know, you don't have any oil or coolant or anything leaking in front of that and back in the engine area also. You want to make sure that all of your oils are, are not leaking on the ground. Your coolant is good. Um, you know, just it's just a good practice to do before you get on the road. Um, one thing I like to do is run the generator out. Um, and this is just kind of a, a little bit more in-depth look at, at everything that's that's in there. Make sure that you don't have anything that's loose. Fluids are leaking. You want to look back. Uh, look at your washer fluid while you're in here. Uh, just take a peek around there. And make sure you don't have any wires that are hanging. Uh, you know, all of your lines for your air conditioning, your dash heater, your hydraulics for the for the ram on the, on the generator tray. All of that stuff is on. You want to make sure that you don't have any issues before you get on the road. Yes. Ronnie Blackman said that if you have a problem with your step coming out, is it his cable under there yeah. with the T-handle? Where is that? It's right here. So if you take a look here, this is a release for, for oh. this particular step, the, the Braun Executive step. Yeah. So if you have a, uh, a realm, or an IH, you're going to have this step here. So uh, there's an instruction card that's on it tells you what, what to do. So. You know, you'll just turn it to unlock it, pull it, and that releases that step to where you can manually push it in, and then you lock it back and it's there. You just want to be careful, and remember that, when you open that door, that step's not going to be there. Uh, <laughs> so, just just ask me how I know. Uh, <laughs> how, how would that work on a, I, I got an IC37, it's a different. It's a different step. Um, it doesn't have a, a manual uh, release like that. You probably have to take it apart. And yeah, I didn't see that. one. So, um, okay, moving, moving along. So when, when we refer to our, our storage base, uh, we'll use driver passenger side and we'll shorten that to the B side or the P side. And then we'll number them from one to whatever in the back. So this is gonna be our D1. And our D1 has changed a little bit, but the concept remains the same. Uh, we still have chassis electrical in our D1 compartments. Uh, you'll, you'll still see uh, air switches in there for, for your horn. You know, this is a, a breaker board of your self-resetting breakers for your chassis electrical system, your controller for your smart wheel. If you have um, one of the four travel chassis coaches, if you have a, a Spartan chassis coach, it's going to be a little different. So, um, 
you know, you can put things in here. Uh, this does have that plexiglass cover on it, so that's a good thing. Uh, some of them may not have a cover on it, or it may be a different style cover, so you wanna just be careful on what you're putting in there uh, so you don't short something out. Now, all of these storage bays are gonna be different, um, you know, on your coach. Some of them may be uh, storage, some of them may be batteries. Uh, it, it just all kind of depends on what generation coach that you have. Uh, but uh, this one has, looks like it has some custom built shelves in there. Uh, you have an electric cargo bay, which all of our coaches now come with uh, electric cargo bay trays. Um, if you take a look in here, we, we kind of split up our our uh, modules, our control modules for different things. So in, in this coach in particular, uh, this particular bay houses a couple of things. Uh, we have our Trimark keyless entry system. Uh, the module for it is here. Uh, your awnings, uh, your controls are gonna be midship uh, right there. Your HWH control board. Um, you can always tell it's an HWH. It's an aluminum can with a plexiglass cover on it. That's your controls for your slide rooms, um, your air leveling system. If you have air leveling system and the not hydraulic, right. uh, looks like the transmission control modules in here. That may be ABS, uh, but they're all kind of different. So they really more or less standardized locations on the Spartan chassis, uh, just because you know we don't have the flexibility that we had on. Uh, you have a four travel chassis with the active air system. Your coach is going to have some manual fill valves, and this is to manually air up your airbags if that system goes down so you can get down the road. Um, and they're trader valve just like you find on the top. And they'll just be in different locations just based on your floor plan, based on the coach that you have. Only the ones with active air? Only the ones with active air. Now, uh, most of our coaches have octalots, unless you have um, a particular generation in the early 2000s or mid 2000s, really, you have Oasis. Um, but the idea is still the same. It provides your domestic hot water and heat for the coach. So it's kind of a dual purpose. And you can um, use diesel fuel to warm up your water, you can use electric elements. Uh, the larger coaches that have the 600s have dual elements. The smaller coaches that have the smaller octopod and bones have one. Um, let's see. It's what we call our electronics bay. And so we're gonna house several things in here, several important things. So we'll start here. This is your transfer relay box. Your transfer relay box is what takes shore power or generator power. It looks at it and makes sure that it qualifies. If it qualifies, that relay inside of there will engage and let the power go to the coach. And what do I mean about qualify? Voltage is good. Uh, it's not above or below the threshold that's set in the relay. So if you plug in, relay doesn't click in, uh, you check your voltage at your at your pedestal, th that you may see the difference. So is that like a voltage regulator? Or not, it not doesn't really. regulate, it just no, makes sure it that it's Yes, it makes sure that it's not gonna damage anything in your, in your coach. So, if it's above 130 or 133, it's not going to let it in the coach. If it's below 95, it's not going to let it in the coach to keep from damaging stuff. And Jeremy, <laughs> if, it, if it rejects for whatever reason, the draw power, mm -hmm. does it throw up a warning to you? How it do you will. know? It will. Uh, your yeah. silver, this, uh, this has a communication wire to it. And on this coach, it's, it's uh, wired into the CAN system. And so the silver leaf will tell you if you're under voltage, if the okay. frequency is, is not good or if, uh, if there's something else going on, it will tell you. Could be wrong. Could be, it could be, so, and, and it will report that on the silver link on the later model, model coaches. Now, if you have the search guard without silver link, you'll have a control panel and uh, it, it may give you an error and you may have to look. How will that show up? Will it be a different color or an exclamation point or how? It depends. If it's a, if you have a silver leaf system, it'll be, um, depending on the generation, you may have a red or a yellow warning and it'll tell you. It'll be something obviously it'll different. It'll something obvious, yes. yes. 
Uh, so moving down here is our HWH hydraulic pump. This is going to be the pump that uh, that works operates your your slide rooms. Uh, that's the reservoir for it, and that does have a dipstick in that cap, so you can check your fluid levels. Now all of the cylinders have to be clapped, so there's a, a particular sequence of which room has to be in or out, and if you have jacks, if your jacks are up or down. Uh, look in your own, as man, and it'll, it'll tell you. Usually it's the bed slides that have, are the only ones that has to be out for that cylinder to be collapsed, everything else is in. And so you'll, uh, you'll check that by unscrewing it and it'll tell you, and that's just the ATF that's in there, uh, automatic transmission. Uh, behind that is going to be your air compressor. That air compressor, its primary uh, function is going to be your bladders on your slide rooms. It's going to uh, inflate, deflate those, and it's going to operate your slide room, or excuse me, your leveling system if you have airbag leveling. Uh, so if you have hydraulic reports, it's not, it's not doing anything with that. This is your uh, air leveling system. Questions? Yeah. Uh, we'll go ahead. Oh, uh, as far as winterized. Now, is there, we have a realm, a 2020 realm. Okay. Now, is there any kind of bypass valve that you, to bypass the pop? That's a whole different system with aquahot, right? Um, you know, like in the other coaches where you, you didn't want to put six gallons into the, to the, the water pump, so you have a bypass valve, so it'll bypass that when you, when you put in the, uh, the fluid. The, you're talking about the antifreeze? Um, no, I don't, I, I don't believe so, unless it's added aftermarket. It, it could be aftermarket, but on the 2020s... So there's no bypass and it probably doesn't need it. Uh, well, you would introduce that um, antifreeze into your system through the water hose, through your shoreline water hose, and then you would just circulate it with the pump, if that's what you're asking. Okay. Okay. Uh, but that's that's an air air pump back there. That's that's for your leveling system and side rooms. Yes, sir. I know to release the valve, the cylinder oil, Hydraulics to let the slide be able to push the slide in. Mm -hmm. What I have to do to get the uh, airbag to release if it won't release? Okay. Uh, do you have to take the hose off? Or no. A valve underneath the hose. Oh, you have to pull the uh, air uh, You don't have to pull the hose off. If you look on that back wall there, you'll see those what we call air manifolds. Yeah. That's on that very back back wall. And there's a T handle that goes into it. Yeah. So what you want to do is just close that valve and now it doesn't necessarily deflate your air bladder, it just drops it to atmospheric pressure so right. it's not yeah, actually, it suck it, back. Yeah, it doesn't suck but, it out. And how easy is one of those things to push in? The last guy stuck not. in almost New Mexico one of, one of the air modules. Well, that's, that's the first step is to release the air on the bladder. Second step is um, on on the hydraulic pump, you want to release that solenoid. Yeah. But um, what it did was it released it and it never hit the limit switch to where it showed it had enough vacuum on the bladders and everything. Okay, there's a so, bypass for that too. Uh, you know, if your hydraulics are working but your air system is not, uh, there is a bypass for for that that pressure switch on the on the air seal. So that computer is looking for the vacuum on on this, and if it never achieves it or if that switch is bad and it never, quote unquote, sees it, you know, you'll never get the solid light on, on your HWH system. But there is a bypass for that. There's a, a, a wire on that manifold that we were just discussing. It says vacuum. So there's a jumper that you can do, and you can do it with a paper clip, and you can do it with a small piece of wire, and fool that computer, and so you can operate your room. Now, if your hydraulics are down and your air is working, then uh, you want to release the pressure on, on your bladder, and then also release the pressure on that particular solenoid for, for that room. You might be lucky and, and they might be labeled. Uh, rooms, uh, <laughs> sometimes they wear off over time or if hydraulic fluid gets on that label, you, you may not be able to see it, is, is my point. Uh, so our rooms on all of our coaches are gonna be numbered starting with this one, one, two, three, and four. So if you have problems with the number of two room, you know it's gonna be driver's side, second room. So you wanna find the corresponding solenoid, release the pressure on it, and you'll be able to push it in. It's not easy. You might have to have some help, but you can't get it in. Can you point out the solenoid? Yeah. Um, 
see those those uh, cylindrical items on on the on the top of the view? Yeah, so, they're, Jeremy, they're on the they're on the equalizing cylinder are they? on this coach. Okay, you're right. They're on. Uh, uh, of course, take a visual back here. You want to look and make sure you don't have anything hanging down. You don't have any fluid spraying it anywhere. Uh, you want to look at your sight glass for your, your coolant. Make sure you're good there. If you have a fire suppression system, uh, just take a quick look at that gauge and make sure that it's uh, in the green there. You don't have a problem with it. Uh, your belts, you know, just give them a quick thump. Make sure they're tight. Nothing sprayed on there. Uh, wipe the plate lights. Uh, make sure that, you know, there's there's nothing abnormal. And sight and smell, you can smell coolant a mile away. Um, you know, engine oil has a very distinct smell too. So, uh, you know, just take a look back here and make sure that you don't have anything out of the ordinary on your pre-trip, uh, you can look at your clearance lights and your four ways while you have them flashing. Uh, any questions on engine compartment? It's all pretty straightforward unless you find something. To that, do the uh, engine start back here, do you need to have the key in the ignition? Yes, it needs to be in the ignition and in the run position. And that, uh, what he's asking about are these buttons here. Some uh, coaches have them, some don't. On, on your generation coach. Radiators in, in different coolers. You have oil coolers, fuel coolers, uh, charge air cooler. Uh, all of that is going to be back behind here. Uh, and I believe that's secured with screws, so it's it won't, uh, we, can't, we can't open that unless you have a coolant. And you shouldn't need to get in there, but if you did, then... Okay. So, in, in this compartment, we're going to have our water distribution system. Um, we still use this, this same manifold today. And so your, your tank water, whether you're on city pressure or on water pump, it's gonna go through this distribution module and go to different areas in the coat. So let's say for example, you have a, uh, your rear lav um, in, in, the, in the bath starts a leak under the sink. You can come out here with your key and shut off water supply to that specifically without having to cut water to the rest of the coach. Um, you know, it's one of the, one of the features of, of that water manifold. Pretty yeah. nice. Any questions? A spigot. Do you recommend using, in, in, in just the normal course, do you recommend using city water pressure or the pump? Um, I, it depends. Um, you know, the 12 volt pumps are can only do so much. Uh, so if you have the option to go on city water, as long as it's not um, for a long duration of time, especially if it's on well water. Well water can cause some problems, um, you know, with silt and uh, that kind of stuff. Yeah. If you're running a filtration system, it's, it's you know, not as big of a deal, but if, if you're not running that filter, uh, it's that stuff still going in your tank regardless. So if you're running city water, you know, that, that I've seen instances where, where um, so when you're running on city water, it's running through the tank. No, it doesn't run through the tank. It yeah, bypasses say, the tank. Uh, but I'm talking does it about bypasses those filters. No, it'll go through the filters. Okay. Is, well, it depends on how it's set up. Why is that that color? I, I have no idea. So that's I say, is that's aftermarket. Uh, that's that's not. Uh, I think the, the previous customer had to then install before. Coming out of the water. If you have to run off the pump full time, you have to run off the pump full time. Guys, keep turning the pump on and off, right? No, it's an you, pump. correct. Yeah. Uh, and and you Some might people might be worried about burning it up. Yeah, just leave the switch on. I mean, just leave it on. Think, 
do you recommend a water pressure regulator? Yes. Because they're all like 40 to 50. Yeah, um, wood runner regulators. Some of our affects the water some flow if you use in. city water. Some of them are built in on our coast, so you don't want to double regulate it. Uh, make sure and read your owner's manual to see what applies okay. specifically. Yeah, because I mean, we put that on and then it takes forever to yeah. fill. Yeah. And the water doesn't come out very fast. It's an adjustable one. Well, you can, can have, have an, adjustable. Oh, absolutely. You can have one. an adjustable one or, I'll show it to you. or if, if you want to take a reading of the water pressure. You I'd know. like to see it. I saw one thing that said maximum, I think it was for my coach, 125 pounds per square inch. Yeah, that's high. Yeah, yeah. no way. <laughs> well, I thought I saw that somewhere. I don't do that. You're going to find a leak that way. Pressure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the pressure <laughs> regulator is 40, and I was yeah. wondering if there's a half. I wouldn't go above 50. Really? All right, batteries. So we have used either jail cell batteries or AGM batteries for house batteries. It just kind of depends on the generation of the coat. Uh, do they have an advantage over lead acid batteries? Absolutely. Uh, capacity is going to be different. Uh, your uh, amp hours are going to be different on, on the uh, AGMs uh, versus lead acid. Uh, your chargers are set up for your particular battery. So if your coach came with jail cell batteries, that charger is, is specific for, for that charging rate for those batteries. So if you go and change batteries, if you want to run a lead acid, then you can. Uh, you'll just have to change your charging parameters to uh, to function. Well, I mean, do you have to know what the top off bolt setting should be for AGM? Uh, depends what, what, what your model coach. It's 2020. Uh, uh, 13, 6, or 8 kind of sounds right to me. Well, that's what somebody told me, but mine says 12.8. That's not right. That's not right. When you're done charging, it should be above 13. Yeah. Uh, 13, 6, I believe, is your, is your when you get to that final charging stage, it, it should be around 13, 6, or 13, 8. And what should the start with? Uh, 12, 2. Yeah, that's, well, that's I thought that 12, 8 looked low to me. When I was reading the literature for the battery, mm -hmm. it said like 13.4 to 13.6 on the top of Where are you seeing this? On your silver leaf panel? Where In upcoming videos, we're going to have a full review of the ladies' driving school and also a factory tour of the Ford Travel factory. We hope you enjoyed this video. It provides some excellent uh, material for doing a diesel pusher walk around. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And thank you to all our subscribers. We appreciate you coming back on a weekly basis. Thank you and take care. Bye.